All right, guys, so over on MSNBC, the supposed left-wing mainstream media outlet here in the United States, they have gone so far down the rabbit hole in defending what Israel is doing in Gaza right now that they're essentially, not even essentially, quite literally using terrorist logic to justify the unjustifiable. So here we have Donnie Deutsch, a contributor at MSNBC, who is going to try to explain away the nearly 1,000 casualties that came as a result of that recent IDF operation inside of Gaza, where they ended up rescuing four hostages that were taken. They may have killed three hostages in the process of doing so. We still haven't gotten confirmed reports on that. And they also, again, killed about 270 and injured close to 700 other Palestinians as a part of this operation. So let's go ahead and watch this clip here of Donnie. That was tweeted out by the official Government of Israel Twitter account, by the way. It was also tweeted out by his personal Twitter account. So he's very proud of this statement. Let's go ahead and jump into it. We have to start to really talk honestly about the definition of civilian casualties. Four hostages rescued and 270 Palestinian civilians killed. We need to start to look at that word civilians when the hostages are being held by a Palestinian journalist, a civilian, and a Palestinian doctor, a civilian. These are not civilians. These are Hamas ambassadors. And yes, there are innocent civilians, but I think back to also the, the hundreds and thousands of rabid Gazans as they dragged a corpse through Gaza, uh, cheering, hysterical, with glee and joy. And I, it's just, once again, the media coverage is, and these were four hostages that were taken on a day that 1,200 Israelis were slaughtered, maimed, decapitated, killed in the most gruesome way. and. I don't know if, if Americans had four hostages that were taken and we had a rescue mission. And yes, there were 270 casualties. And many of those Palestinian casualties are deep, deep, deep sympathizers of, of Hamas. Would the coverage be the same way? Would anybody be criticizing the rescue mission or would it be truly one of heroism? But I do think we have to start to really be talk honestly, honestly about the definition of civilian casualties. Okay. So, a couple of things right off the bat here. First off, he's wrong. There were not 270 casualties. There were 270 people that were killed, according to the Gaza Ministry of Health. There were, again, close to 1,000 casualties. Now, part of what he just said there is that he says a huge bulk, at least, of those 1,000 casualties were rabid Hamas supporters. I'm sorry, where did you get that information from? Do you know the names of the people who were killed and who were injured? Did you go and cross-check their social media posts or whatever? What? How exactly did you determine that they were rabid Hamas supporters and that they loved October 7th or whatever the case may be? You didn't. You just completely pulled that out of your ass and said, because these people are Palestinian, because they live in Gaza, therefore, I'm kind of just going to, in a very broad scopes way, say that not only they support Hamas, but that because some of them may have supported Hamas in one way or another, that therefore they are not civilians. So what he's saying here, to be explicitly clear, is again, the exact same logic of somebody like Osama bin Laden, for example, right? Part of the logic, and this was brought up by Crystal over on Twitter, is that when Osama bin Laden launched the 9-11 attacks in the United States, part of the justification for that was to say the United States is a democracy, right? The American people vote in their government, and so therefore the American people are complicit with the violent actions or the imperial actions of their government. And so when I fly planes into the World Trade Center buildings, it's not because I'm attacking civilians, it's because these Americans are not civilians, right? You could say the same thing about any terrorist organization. This is collective punishment that he's describing here. He's saying, I believe that these are all rabid Hamas supporters, therefore it's kind of justified in killing them as a part of this operation. Now, another aspect of this is he compares it to a situation where, in a hypothetical, this was the United States doing this kind of a mission. And we actually don't even have to, you know, hypothesize about that because we've had U.S. officials who have come out, right, and former military commanders and all of that, who have openly said, we would never sign off on an operation like this, thinking that potentially hundreds of civilians could be killed as a part of a hostage rescue mission to get four hostages. I don't even think that this is something the U.S. government would have signed off on. So I think he's wrong about that as well. But again, the underlying logic is explicitly terroristic. There's really no other way to put what he's saying there. And this is stuff that's being said on the supposed left-wing network, MSNBC, right? And, and nobody bats an eye at this. 
right? You could be somebody like Mehdi Hassan, who's actually critical of the government of Israel. And because you're critical, because you do difficult interviews with some Israeli officials, you're going to get pushed out the door, right? But you can have somebody like this come on your network and openly say, eh, you know, I don't really believe in the concept of innocent Palestinians. And that's somehow completely normal. This is how dehumanized, thoroughly dehumanized Palestinians have become. And this is something that Omar Badr brought up a couple of days ago when talking about the hostage rescue mission or whatever, is just think about if this was in the reverse. Would Donny Deutsch be giving a justification if it was a Palestinian militant group that went in to one of these Israeli detention camps or concentration camps or torture camps, whatever you want to call them, and went and tried to rescue some of the Palestinians who were being held there without charges and are effectively being held hostage, and they went in there and in the process of doing so, blew up an Israeli market and wounded and killed close to a thousand Israelis. Would they be justifying this? Would they be saying that's a heroic mission? No, they'd be saying that's October 7th, 2.0. So it's a very simple case here of the US media, once again, viewing all of these conflicts, whether it's Israel, whether it's any other situation that involves the United States and our allies, they view this through a simple black and white lens. When we do something, when one of our allies does something, it is by definition morally good. And when our enemies or our political adversaries or our State Department designated bad guys do the exact same thing, then it's somehow terrible and terroristic and immoral and evil, right? This is the kind of logic that they use. Now, we also had the government of Israel, the official account here, that tweeted out something similar. They said, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. And also this is an ad. Look at this. They were floating this into people's For You pages. We need to talk about the elephant in the room. Many Gazan civilians participated in the horrific events of October 7th. It is also reported that Gazan civilians held Israeli hostages captives in their home. The world must condemn this in the strongest terms. But here's the quote with the picture that they have down here. There are no innocent civilians there. Guys, this is the official account of the government of Israel. What are you supposed to take away from this? Other than this is the most obvious and clear genocide in world history. Typically, and this is something I brought up when I was covering the updates on the International Court of Justice genocide case that Israel is currently facing right now, is that typically the most difficult aspect of proving a genocide is the intent aspect of it, right? You have to prove that the military apparatus or the government apparatus that is engaging in the genocide is willfully doing so. With Israel, you don't really have to look that hard, guys. I mean, this is one example, but we have countless others right? There are no innocent civilians in Gaza, or Benjamin Netanyahu bringing up the biblical story of Amalek, where it explicitly says to go and kill everybody, man, women, child, you know, ox, camel, sheep, to wipe them out. Or saying that, you know, we are the children of the light and they are the children of the darkness. Or we're going to do a complete siege where we cut off the food, the fuel, the water, the electricity, and then now, look, whoa, surprise, surprise, we ended up with a famine in Gaza. I mean, we have countless, countless examples of genocidal statements, openly genocidal statements, from the government of Israel. This is just another one. There are no innocent civilians there. What, what, what are you supposed to take from this, guys? Now, another part of what he mentioned in that, um, that diatribe he just went on there is he brought up that Israel has accused um, an Al Jazeera journalist of being one of the people who held these hostages that were rescued um, inside of their home. Now, in terms of that, here from CNN, Israel alleges journalists held hostages in Gaza without providing any evidence. And then you look a little bit further into the details, this Al Jazeera journalist that they're talking about here, first off, they say Al Jamal never worked for the network, but once contributed to an opinion piece on Al Jazeera. So already strike number one, he's not an Al Jazeera journalist, okay? He had one piece that he was given credit for doing years ago, back in, I think it was 2019. So that's strike number one. He's already not an Al Jazeera journalist, according to you know, Al Jazeera, except for this one instance. But then they also say, without providing evidence, the Israeli X account that is connected to the Israeli government claimed that Argamani, one of these hostages, was held in his home before later saying that it was actually the three men who were held in his home. So you have conflicting reports that are going on here, right? And keep in mind, we're talking about multi-story buildings that had numerous different people that were within these buildings that these Israeli hostages were being held. It's entirely plausible that even if this guy was an Al Jazeera journalist, and even if he was in one of the houses that they went and did these raids on, 
he may not have, not have even known that the hostages were in that same house that he was in, right? Or had any control over where they were, right? Every single level of this is completely unproven and warped and twisted, and they've already been caught in, like, several different falsehoods in regards to this allegation. And this is, again, purely in service of not only trying to demonize Al Jazeera, but to justify what has become one of, if not the single deadliest conflicts, if you want to call it that, I would call it a genocide, but one of the single deadliest wars or conflicts in modern history for journalists. This is what they do, right? We're going to lie, we're going to warp the truth, we're going to smear so that we can keep killing journalists with impunity. And then we'll have motherfuckers like Donny Deutsch on, on MSNBC who go out and spout our propaganda and use our talking points and defend all of it, right? We need to have a serious conversation about this concept of innocent civilians. How about civilians are civilians are civilians until they're not? Until they pick up a gun, right? How about that? How about somebody who's a journalist with a camera is not a Hamas terrorist because you don't like the stuff that they're covering? How about that as a standard? Guys, there were dozens of kids who were killed in that, that the bombing of the market and during this raid to go and get these Israelis out. Dozens of children. Are those children also Hamas? Are they militants? Are they valid targets to you? I mean, how fucking disgusting is all of this? Now, with all of that being said, you know, although there are some journalists on MSNBC, I wouldn't even call Donnie Deutsch a journalist, but there are some commentators on MSNBC who are just going like full-blown, I'm pro-terrorism right now, and basically using the logic that if you applied it to a different situation, let's say like here in the United States, right, George W. Bush launched a totally illegal criminal war in Iraq that ended up killing thousands, countless thousands of innocent civilians. So by the same logic that Donnie Deutsch is deploying there, you could make an argument that, okay, any Iraqi that was affected, which would probably be all of them, any Iraqi that was affected by George Bush's invasion of Iraq has a right to come over here to the United States and to kill any American who was in favor of that war. Any American who voted for George W. Bush can be killed by any Iraqi. That's the, the sick logic that he's using right now. But of course, it would only apply in this scenario. No other scenarios can possibly apply to. Now, again, as I was saying, even though you have guys like Donnie Deutsch on networks like MSNBC, you also do have some fantastic commentators, right? I mentioned... Mehdi Hassan, who got pushed out, he was fantastic when he was there. And you also have guys like uh, Eamon. Now, Eamon recently did a, a monologue um, on MSNBC, which I think was uh, incredible and um, accurate and factual. And I'll link this down below if you guys want, want to go watch the entirety of it. But let's just go ahead and watch a little bit of his coverage of this recent hostage rescue mission. Today, eight months into Israel's war in Gaza, the world witnessed two very different realities. And regardless of how you view these last few months of death and destruction, what transpired in the city of Nusayra today raises a series of serious questions regarding a collective failure to end the war, to bring all the hostages home, and to stop the indiscriminate large-scale killing of Palestinians. On Saturday, over 200 Palestinians were killed in Israeli airstrikes on Nusayrat, a refugee camp in central Gaza, according to the government media office, marking one of the bloodiest single days we have witnessed in eight months of war. Videos of the aftermath of the assault show streets littered with debris and dead bodies, many missing limbs. Women and children can be seen among the dead. Some images too disturbing that we can't even show you on screen. One witness described the scene to Reuters by saying, quote, it was like a horror movie, but this was a real massacre. While bombs rained down on Nusayrat, Israeli security forces were conducting a raid in the same neighborhood, rescuing four hostages held by Hamas since October. All are said to be in good medical condition and have been reunited with their families, their release bringing joy to millions of Israelis. But after the strike, Francesca Albanese, the United Nations Special Rapporteur, condemned Israel's mission, noting that although she was, quote, relieved that four hostages have been released, it should not have come at the expense of at least 200 Palestinians. She called it, quote, humanitarian camouflage at another level. Today's raid marks the third Israeli rescue attempt since October 7th. The country's military uh, had said that a hostage was brought home in the immediate aftermath of the attack. Back in February, two more men were rescued during a raid in Rafah after Israeli forces stormed an apartment in the densely packed area. And those airstrikes also killed more than 60 Palestinians, including women and children, according to local officials. Of course, we also cannot forget three Israeli hostages were killed by the Israeli military back in December. And that happened after soldiers mistakenly identified them as a threat and opened fire on them, despite the fact that they were holding and waving white flags. So far, the vast majority of Israeli hostages have been released by Hamas through negotiations and temporary ceasefires, not wanton destruction and killing of Palestinians, 
like what we witness today. I mean, listen, that's that's the real final point that needs to be made here is that the overwhelming majority of the hostages that have been returned to Israel have come through that temporary pause in the fighting back in November, right? And now we're in a situation where the Biden administration is trying to gaslight the American people to say that this Israeli proposal, you know, this supposed Israeli proposal was brought forward by them while the government of Israel is saying, no, we're not actually in favor of that proposal. And they're basically trying to, I think, give somewhat of a justification to continue this onslaught by saying, look, don't blame us. It's not us. We're not the blockade. Hamas isn't accept accepting the deal. Even though Hamas, based on their statements that, they, that have come out over the last couple of days, is much more receptive to this supposed Israeli proposal than the Israeli government is. And so you have the Biden administration trying to gaslight the American people, basically trying to gaslight Israel as well, to pretend as if a ceasefire proposal where Hamas has to agree to completely unilaterally disarm and give in to who knows what, a, a permanent Israeli occupation, a U.S. occupation, a um, you know Saudi occupation, whatever the case may be for the plan after in Gaza. And it's just, it's a plan that they know that Hamas would never accept to if it involves their own destruction. Hamas is not going to just willingly disarm no matter how much you despise Hamas, right? I don't like Hamas. I don't, I, I would prefer that Hamas wasn't in power, but I also recognize that the only reason Hamas is in power is because of the Israeli occupation. Hamas would not exist. October 7th would not have happened if it wasn't for the Israeli occupation. And so, you know, you have this stark contrast on outlets like MSNBC, where somebody like Donnie Deutsch can get up there and basically just espouse the views of a terrorist. And then you have other guys like Eamon, who are very few and far between in the mainstream media, who are willing to call out the occupation, the apartheid, the ethnic cleansing, the genocide. And it's a, it's a very stark, noticeable you know, contrast that we have going on right now. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Donnie Deutsch needs to get together with Eamon, and Eamon can explain some of the basics of this to him. Politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying...